Hi, this is Sam Grant, and welcome back to our fireworks uh, segment of training. In this video, we're going to show you how to start the basics of using fireworks as an animation tool. And uh, this is going to be like in multiple videos, so the first one is going to be relatively simple. We're going to show you how simple it is to actually animate this simple object that we have over here, which is the logo for the uh, form that I've set up. So I'm going to go ahead and then show you how easy it is to use the symbol properties and convert this into an animation. Now, if you watched the earlier videos, you've noticed that we've showed you how to actually create a button symbol. This time, we're going to show you how to make an animation symbol. Now, to do this, you simply go up, once again, to the Modify menu. And under Modify, you're choosing Symbol, and then Convert to Symbol again. We're right back to the same dialog box we had before. And we're going to give this a name. So I'm going to call this one Logo 1. And then we're going to choose animation as the type this time. I'm not going to choose any of the options right now. We're just going to stop with this. Press the OK button. And the animate dialog box now shows up. Here you'll notice quite a few things. You've got states, move, direction, scale, opacity, and rotate. Now, let's take these one step at a time. The first area, which is the state section, actually indicates the individual frames your work is going to be going through. For example, if you wanted to have your animation to play out in, let's say, five steps or five frames, you would actually set five states here. If you wanted the animation to move from one location to the other, you would actually tell it the distance that you wanted to move from here. In direction, you would tell it which direction you wanted to go into. Of course, scale means you can go up to 100% if you'd like to or down to a lower number. Opacity allows you to go between 100% to nothing and anything in between or vice versa. And of course, the rotation allows you to go in any degree and you can rotate either clockwise or counterclockwise. So let's just go ahead and put in some random numbers just to test our theory. In the state section, you're going to get this little slider and I'm going to increase this up so we've got roughly about, let's say, 12 states. You can also type inside these boxes if you see fit. In the move, I'm going to set it to the maximum distance, which is 250 pixels. But of course, you can type in a higher number. More on this later. The direction we want it to go into, we can use this little rotation ball and say, I would like to have this to go from here down to the lower corner. So I'm going to set my direction to 325 degrees. In the scaling process, I like the logo to actually get larger. So I'm going to go ahead and then put in a number here of 200%. In the opacity, I'd like to have this particular piece start from 0% opacity and then go up to 100%. And the rotation I want on this one is a full 360 degrees. And I want the rotation to go counterclockwise. Now let's press OK and see what we have. Now it's telling me right now that this particular animation extends beyond the last state of the document. Because in the states, you're going to find out that right now there's only one default state per file. A couple of things have happened. First of all, you'll notice that number one, it's in the document library. It's listed as the word logo one. And the type is not button, but animation. Now up here, in this top area, let's click over to states. Well, we can't do it yet because we have this piece over here. Let's just go ahead and press OK. And now you'll see that there are, there's a green dot and a red dot. Now I'm going to flip over to states real quick and you'll notice that there are 12 states listed here. Each one of these represents a different point in the animation. Now the green dot represents the starting point and the red dot represents the end point. Now each one of these is editable and movable at the same time so what we're going to do is we're going to actually grab this red point and I'm going to drag this over and it also allows you to move at any point. You can make this longer or shorter depending on what you're looking for, and you can also change the angle. If you were to grab the green point, it moves that point to another location as well. Now I'm going to stretch this over so it's about right here. And this is where I'd like my animation to travel from. So now I'm going to go over here to the States panel, and I want you to notice what happens as I click through these. This is State 2. Notice that the transparency has already started. Notice here that it's even more and more and more and more. So each one of these represents a different state for the animation to play in. 
Now, further over here you see the number 7 in all of these categories here. The number 7 in this place actually stands for 7 one hundredths of a second or many, basically what you're doing is you're looking at the basic breakdown of what 7 would be. If you were to click on one of these 7's, you'll notice that it has a state delay. And in this instance it tells you exactly what is here and you can change these numbers by making it last longer or making it shorter. So obviously here, in order for this to get to be 1 second, you'd have to go up to 100. So 100 one hundredths of a second, of course, is 1 second. Click away to get out of the window. Now, let's just see what the animation looks like. It is possible for you to go through the process and preview the animation and then watch the animation play as well. So, if you were to go back into this piece and say, all right, I want to see what the animation looks like. I'm going to go ahead now and then you can set this button to begin playing the piece on it. But to do this, first of all, we want to make sure we've done a couple of things first. I don't want the animation to stop when it gets over here to the end. I want the animation to basically just keep, st just to stay on this last stage a little bit longer than seven tenths of a second. So to get it to stop and keep it from going that way, I'm going to go down to the last state and then I'm going to increase the, t the seconds on this one up to 100. So now we know it's going to stop for at least one second there. If you want it to stop for longer than a second, you can put in a higher number. Of course, 200 actually goes to 200, two seconds. So here's our animation. Here's the piece we're using. Now all the way down here at the bottom window, you'll see that there are several different play commands. One is all the way to the front, which is this one. There's one in here that's all the way to the end, which is this one. And of course the one in the center is play. Let's go to the beginning, click the play button, and watch the animation. You can stop it by clicking on the same button again, and it goes here, and that ends the animation wherever you want it to stop. Now let's say that you're ready to actually save this animation as a separate file. The first thing you want to do is to go up to the Optimize panel, and then switch it to Animated GIF. Failure to do this will just export it as a regular single file, and the animation will not play. So I'm going to choose Animated GIF as my Optimize option here, with no transparency setting on it. Then I'm going to go back over to the File menu and choose Export. Now it's up to you to say where you want this file to actually be exported. So you can actually go out to anywhere you want. I'm going to go ahead and set up a brand new folder. And this new folder is going to be Animation. And in this file, I'm going to save this GIF animation as the joint logo. It's already saved as a GIF because of my settings in the Optimize panel, and then I'm going to press Export. And that's how simple it is to actually set the file up. Now, in order to see what the file looks like, let's go into one of the browsers. And then let's go ahead and navigate to the file. So what I'm looking for is out on the desktop, animation, and there's the GIF image, and press open. And that's how simple it is to make the animation. When we come back, we'll show you how to do even more editing to get even more effects out of these files.